One of the most interesting chapters in this uh, material is the chapter on uniform circular motion that we're going to discuss today. We're all familiar with motion and uh, uniform circular motion. Uh, uh, Earth moves around the sun in, in a roughly circular motion. The moon moves around the Earth. But also, uh, right back to the original days when you're thinking about balls rolling, uh, wheels, um, lots of things are circular. And, and so this is the, the subject of this chapter. So the first section will define uniform circular motion and various parameters associated with it. So let's start off with a video. This is a demonstration of uniform circular motion. Uniform circular motion is when an object moves in a circle at a constant speed. And you may notice that although the speed is constant, the velocity is not. The velocity is a measure of both the speed, the, the amount, uh, the, how fast it's moving, as well as the direction. So as it comes around in the circle, here it's moving that way, this way. So those two velocity vectors are not the same. But their magnitudes, which are the speed, are the same. So as long as I'm moving this in a circle and trying to keep it uniform in speed, that is uniform circular motion. Another example of circular, uh, uniform circular motion would be just like this. If I keep a nice constant speed, it's moving in a circle. An example of non-uniform circular motion would be if I go vertically like this. Now, why is this non-uniform uh, circular motion? It's because as the ball is rising on this side, gravity is acting against it, trying to slow it down. So in fact, at the peak, it reaches its slowest speed. And then as it's coming down over on the other side, gravity is acting to speed it up. So it's speeding up, coming down this side. It's reaching its maximum speed at the bottom, its minimum speed at the top. And we therefore have non-uniform circular motion. If I slow it down a little bit, you can see that the string is going a little bit slack near the, near the top. And that is uniform and non-uniform circular motion. OK, let's define some uh, mathematics here. Define uniform circular motion. Define its period, frequency, and radius, and derive the speed. So uniform circular motion is motion of an object traveling in a circular path <laughs> at a constant speed. So those are the two elements that are important. It has to be going at a constant speed, and it has to be going in a circular path. Uh, the period of the motion is denoted by t, and it's a time. So uh, students sometimes confuse period with frequency. The period is the time it takes for one complete revolution. So like, for example, in the video, when the, uh, the foam ball was going around in a horizontal circle, we could have taken our stopwatch, uh, started the stopwatch when the, the ball was here, let it go all the way around one time, and stopped the stopwatch at that same, uh, when the ball is in that same location. That time that appears on your stopwatch is called the period. Just the name we give to the time required for one complete revolution. That's the period. What's the frequency? The frequency of uniform circular motion is defined as 1 over the period. So whatever the period is, the frequency is 1 over that. If the period is the time required to, one, to complete one revolution, then this is uh, a time in seconds to, per revolution. But you take 1 over that, and you get the number of uh, revolutions per time, taking 1 over those units. So the period, or the frequency, is the number of revolutions per second. And it's one over the period. And this is sometimes called the hertz. We won't use that uh, much in this chapter, but in later chapters we'll use um, 
hertz to characterize this frequency. Uh, radius of the circle is, is R. Um, that's just like a circle you learn in, in, in geometry. And then the speed. So if you know the radius of the circle, and if you know the time that it takes to go around the circle, which is called the period, then you can calculate the speed. How so? Well, a speed is going to be a distance divided by a time. But what distance does it travel during one revolution? And the answer is the circumference of the circle, or 2 pi r, that you learned back when, I'm sure you've seen it before, the circumference of the circle is 2 pi r. And so that's the distance that it travels. So the distance that it travels is 2 pi r. The time that it takes to travel that distance is the period t. And that gives you the speed. So anytime, if you, if you forget how to find the speed, you just get it from this very simple argument. It's just a distance over a time. The distance is the circumference of the circle. No big deal. Uh, tire balancing machine. The wheel of a car has a radius of 0.29 meters. Remember the radius is the distance from the center to the outside, 0.29 meters. It's rotated at 830 revolutions per minute. And you might be saying, wow, I recognize revolutions per minute. I've heard of RPMs before because a tachometer on a car measures RPMs, revolutions per minute. But what does that relate, how does that relate to the quantities in the previous slide? Well, it actually re relates to this one, except um, we're not talking about revolutions per second like in the frequency, but revolutions per minute. But we can easily convert between the two. And that's what we'll do. We're supposed to find the speed at which the outer edge of the wheel is moving. Well, this is just uniform circular motion. We've got the radius. We've got the frequency. Frequency is 830 RPMs, or revolutions per minute and then convert minutes to seconds. I'm going to divide by 60 seconds and multiply by one minute in order to have those units cancel each other. And that will give us 830 divided by 60 revolutions per second. So that's, um, that's the frequency uh, written in revolutions per second. Revolutions is not really uh, technically a unit. You can also write this as 14 inverse seconds. It's 14 somethings over seconds. Those somethings are revolutions. Um, so the period, if we want to find the speed, that's what we're after, then we're first going to need to know what the period is. The period is just 1 over the frequency, and we've got the frequency. So it's 1 over 14 revolutions per second. Divide 1 divided by 14 gives 0.072 seconds per revolution, or we normally just write that as 0.072 seconds. We don't put the per revolution in there. Then finally, we have everything we need. We've got 2 pi times the radius divided by the period is 25 meters per second. So that's how fast uh, that outer edge of the the rotating balancing machine would be moving. 